are things that lurk in the shadows and loom in the depths which escape our comprehension. As the Bible warns in the book of Job, there the creatures of the night steal forth, the beasts of prey prowl about. The lioness crouches, awaiting her prey. There the serpents coil and the creatures of the deep wriggle about. Job 41 verses 20 to 30. From the primordial chaos roams ancient behemoths and sea serpents, more frightening than your worst nightmares. This video braves the boundaries of our reality to encounter the five most terrifying creatures from the pages of the Bible. Monsters spoken of in hushed tones even by the prophets and disciples themselves. You may think you've glimpsed true horror in fiction and fantasy. We will delve into infernal forces beyond imagination. These are not mere metaphors. They stalk the earth and surge through the waters as living, breathing terrors. Join us if you dare, as we discover creatures of destruction man was never meant to see. Their existence proves that sometimes darkness truly lies at the shallows of the deepest waters, and it is still hungry. The scariest creatures from the Bible. Number 1. Belovathan. Of all the eldritch titans that instill dread, few rival the biblical sea monster known as the Leviathan. With its myriad twisting heads and an expanse greater than the mightiest whales, this behemoth of the depths defies imagination. The Bible speaks of the Leviathan in Psalm 74, depicting it as a fearsome aquatic creature formed on the fifth day of creation alongside the great whales. Though likely symbolic, later Jewish scholars expanded on its appearance, describing it as having seven heads with fearsome fangs, each flaming hot. Its eyes were like searing suns, scaled armor impenetrable, and blaze of its breath setting the waters aboil. Imagine this epic, grotesque titan heaving its bulk above the waves cascading from craterous spines as it emerges. The roar of the raging maelstrom almost drowns out the prehistoric screams erupting from seven serpentine maws. As hellish eyes rake the shore, scanning for its next hapless meal, rigging snap from the sheer shockwave of its voice. The baleful glare sears sights of insanity into all minds foolish to behold it. Men abandon sanity just as ships crash against crags in their haste to flee. But the horrors have only begun. For this is just one head of the Leviathan. And the rest are turning our way. Few biblical monsters inspire dread and revulsion as much as the abominable spawn known as the Nephilim. Born from the unholy union of fallen angels called the Sons of God and human women, these towering half-breed giants strode the earth in the days before Noah's great flood. Many scholars believe the Sons of God refers to a rebellious faction of angels who lusted after mortal women and took them as wives, begetting twisted offspring that would become known as the Nephilim. They towered over even the mightiest warriors, some growing over 30 feet tall. Their massive frames were bulging, inhuman muscle and sinew that no mortal man could match. Having inherited supernatural gifts from their angelic fathers, they oppressed mankind as man would never oppress animals. Try to envision one of these lumbering titans throwing its shadow over your city's highest ramparts, swaggering through gates meant to withstand battering rams without even slowing its stride. Their footfalls make the earth tremble as they boast of past conquests in voices like earthquake thunder. Lesser men, overcome by the giant size, shrink back in terror as it laughs. The deafening sound echoes through streets like avalanches, shaking tiles from rooftops as it passes. Leering down, the Nephilim reaches out a hand the size of a chariot to snatch up screaming victims, regarding them as little more than rag dolls to be ripped apart on a whim. Few images from Revelation sear into the imagination as much as the infernal legion foretold to usher in the apocalypse. Riding beasts with the heads of lions and tails like serpents, this demonic army numbers 200 million strong, far outstripping the combined hordes of humanity. Emerging from Euphrates River to torment mankind, their steeds gallop through smoke and fire belching from their mouths. The sound of their approach is like endless thunder echoing over horizons. 
It builds from a rumble to a teeth-rattling roar as the first nightmare cavalry breach the veils of reality into our world. Try to envision looking on with horror as their front line emerges from boiling mists, an endless column of otherworldly cavalry charging from the smoke like the very hounds of hell let loose upon the earth. Their mounts boast muscular lion frames packing strength to easily tear apart tanks. Blazing red eyes meet yours for a heartbeat, and you feel sins crawling on your back. Gouts of flame and yellow sulfur spew with each feral roar, scorching the land and skies. The ground trembles under the terrible drumbeat of their thundering hooves. As the ground quakes and the horizon brims with hellfire, blotting out the last vestiges of sunlight, you realize with dread that this is only the first wave. More emerge endlessly from the smoking abyssal strait, answering the summons of the apocalypse horn. All that remains now is fire and desolation before the lion-headed cavalry. To this list, we could also add the behemoth that bursts forth from Book of Job as a beast of legendary size and strength beyond any known to mortals. So colossal are its limbs and massive its frame, early scholars speculated this primordial juggernaut had a form similar in stature to the giant dinosaurs or Titanoboa serpents of ages past. And so we have braved the boundaries of our reality to unveil three of the most terrifying beasts ever to stalk the pages of scripture. From the tempestuous emergence of the seven-headed Leviathan to the towering bloodlust of the Nephilim sweeping away all before them, we witness the apocalyptic approach of 200 million lion-headed cavalries ready to cleanse the world with fire. Each would prove the stuff of timeless nightmares. Yet we must not forget these are prophetic visions granted to apostles by divine providence. The Leviathan from the depths of Psalm 74, the abominable giants known as Nephilim in Genesis, and the lamb breaking the seventh seal to summon those infernal lion-headed hordes in Revelation's final chapters. To encounter even one such horror would mean the end for most. But when divine plan requires it, just a single angel was able to slaughter 185,000 Assyrians in one night. We can only imagine what wrath the hosts of heaven could bring to bear against these creatures or what fresh visions of terror may yet be unleashed when the final trumpets sound. For now, take this warning from the scriptures. Woe to those who face damnation in the paths of such monsters. But woe also to the beasts themselves, for even Leviathan was made to be captured. There are fates in the high heavens worse than mere death, and judgment comes for all. <laughs>